agents. And mute your mics if you'd be so kind. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Sorry, everyone can hear me and we're all good? Yes. I'm clear. Okay. Hey, Trey, how you doing? Well, thank you. Good. Um, so we are going to start with a uh, motion to uh, approve the minutes of our July 27th meeting. Move to approve the minutes. Trey? Second. So we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Um, we'll go on to 3.1, which is submitting a communication for direct annexation. Chuck, I note that there's a piece on this at the end of the agenda. Do we need to do something here? So the, the uh, RO can just be uh, filed and the ordinance which comes later in the, um, in the meeting is probably the more key document. Okay. So if it's okay with everyone, I would like a motion to file the resolution. Move to file. The, Not the resolution, but the RO. I'm sorry, the RO. Move to file the RO. All right, and I think I heard a second somewhere. Second. All right. Um, we'll be getting to this in uh, greater detail at the very end of the meeting. So if there's no further discussion, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Very good. We'll move on to 3.2. Chuck? Now, this is a uh, claim that was filed by Jacqueline Bouchard for alleged damages to her vehicle when a tree limb fell on it. Uh, the uh, committee met to discuss this, and we are recommending uh, denial. All right. And the uh, proper uh, the, the denial letter has been sent out, so the proper motion would be to file. Okay. All right. Um, does anyone have questions for Chuck? If not, I'd ask for a motion to file. Move to file. And am I hearing a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Chair votes aye. All right. 3.3 .3 is a claim from Philip and Suzanne Vanderbilt for sewer overcharges, billed by the town of Sheboygan. Yes, and you picked up on exactly what I'm going to say. Um, the committee met to discuss this uh, and recommended denying it. The bills come from the town of Sheboygan. Um, we're not opining on whether the claim would be valid or not, but it should be filed with the town. And it gives me great pleasure to ask if we can have a motion uh, to, to, you want a motion to file, right? Make a motion to okay. file. Is with there a the... motion to file? Did you catch it? Second. All right. Any other discussion? I just had a I just had a question. Excuse me. I just had a question. Uh, I looked at some of the documentation and emails that were quite lengthy. Were were they were they being billed inappropriately from the town? Was that the uh, the issue, or inappropriately being billed by the city? It was kind of hard to figure out. The allegation is that they were billing, being billed inappropriately and the bills were coming from the town. Okay. Um, that, that's their claim. I'm not weighing in on whether that claim is in any way valid um, and that the town, will, the town will have to deal with that. All right, thank you. All right, so do we have a motion to file? Move to file. And a second. 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 Right. Um, we have a motion and second. Uh, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor state aye. Aye. 
Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. And the uh, motion passes. 3.4 is a resolution um, authorizing appropriate city officials to <laughs> excuse me, execute an engagement letter with Quarles and Brady as our bond council. Uh, Chuck, any comments before we have a motion? Um, you know, as is, we're, we're fine with it. I, you know, there is work being done in the background um, to perhaps uh, change some of the these processes, but for now, we're good. Um, it's been my thought, um, uh, while Coils and Brady is certainly very competent, and because of the nature of the business, there are very few law firms, at least in the state, that can do this. Nonetheless, we should be looking for proposals from other firms or whatever. Any other comments, questions? If not, I am looking for a motion to um, authorize uh, the um, execution of the agreement. So moved. moved. Warren. Second. Marcus. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any aye. Chair votes aye. Very good. 3.5 is a resolution awarding the sale of $4.610 in general obligation refunding bonds. Who's going to take this? Marty? Todd? Yeah, I can take that, Alder Donahue. Thank you, Chair. Um, this is just in preparation for our refunding of the 2007B uh, bonds that were dated September 1st, 2007. Um, this is part of our, will be part of our August 17th special meeting before council where we will be uh, awarding the winning, winning bidders for, for this refunding. Uh, this is the one where we uh, are going to be doing this purely for interest savings. Good. Questions from Marty? Is the interest rate really 13.4%? Yes, actually it might even come in a little bit higher than that. Depends on the market on that day. Wow, there you go. All right, we are looking for, what are we looking for here? We're looking for a resolution to award the sale of the bonds. Is that correct? No, let me take a look here. Chuck, help me out if you think that this maybe made the uh, agenda last council meeting prematurely. I, I'm not sure what you're asking. You think that this made the council agenda prematurely? Yeah, because, because this is the resolution awarding the sale and that hasn't happened yet. Is that correct? Correct. The awarding, right. it happens on the 17th. I think this made it on last, uh, last week, Monday's council meeting, um, in a sense, before the award. I think it was in draft state. Yeah, so I, I but but the committee's got to look it over at least and determine that assuming everything goes fine, it, it's it's okay. And there, so what you're doing is you're recommending approval on the 17th of the the resolution, and probably the motion should include motion to you know recommend approval of the res resolution. Um, you know, assuming the, the sale goes as uh, anticipated on the 17th. Will we actually do that though right. on August mm -hmm. 17th as well? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that question. Will we do that on August 17th as well? The council will on August 17th. So so the, 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 this, this committee is always just, this committee doesn't actually do anything. It recommends to do something. And so that's what's happening here is we're recommending that on the 17th, the council approve it, assuming that everything goes as planned uh, with the sale on the 17th. And then, and, then, and then council will take that recommendation and vote on it on the 17th. We'll have our special meeting on the 17th before the council, which will actually have all the details finalized. A special meeting of the finance committee? Yes. Yeah, I guess we're doing that. Um, okay. then, then you may you may want to wait. Then um, you may want to hold off on this. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Okie dokie. So we will um, uh, just a uh, motion to. 
keep the folder file, Chuck. Hold it. It'll, it'll, then it'll be on the special meeting. All right. We're going to have a motion to hold. Do we have such a motion? Move I'll to move hold. To hold, but I do have one clarifying question because I will forget by Monday. <laughs> Uh, it's not a 13% interest rate on this, right? But it's a 13% or 13.96. I think it was savings and what we would be paying back, right? Correct. It's 13% savings on the amount that's still owed. We will save 13% on that. So it's about, okay. yeah, I think it's the last four okay. years. Okay. All right. Thank you. Well, that makes sense. Thank you, Trey. I appreciate that. Yeah, I was thinking, boy, this isn't 1979. So, um, I think the I think the bot. Uh, this is Alderman Boren, uh, Marty. The uh, actually the interest rate on that on that uh, bond was uh, for something, wasn't it? Four 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 percent something. Correct. It was just north of four percent. Okay. All right. So we need a motion to hold. <coughs> so move, Boren. Second. And is there a second? All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. 3.6 is a resolution authorizing the city administrator to negotiate settlement of certain claims made by the city of Sheboygan. Or made to the city of Sheboygan. I'm, I'm not sure. So um, this is, um, I'm not sure how this is different from our current practice, Chuck. So how this is different is that the, it, the current policy was not entirely clear on settlement authority when, um, when dealing with funds that people owe to us rather than the vice versa. So what this does is basically um, uh, allows, uh, without getting pr prior approval, um, they, we can settle uh, liability insurance claims in an amount to exceed, uh, not to exceed $50,000. Um, so, and basically what, what's gonna happen is um, there would be consultation between our office and the finance department and the city administrator. Uh, on how to settle these kinds of things. And then if the total amount compromised is 50,000 or less, it wouldn't necessarily need to go to council. So as an example, um, somebody runs into a, um, a stop and go light and uh, knocks it down and there's all sorts of damage done and, and DPW builds them for, for the various work that's being done. Um, and then, you know, they say well, the insurance company comes back and says, we're willing to pay, you know, 90%, but we're not willing to pay this 10% because of X, Y, and Z. Well, that would enable us to not have to go to council every single time to settle those kinds of things. Okay. Uh, as long as it's under 50,000 um, administrator can do it. To my mind, it's a little bit of a distinction without a difference, but first, how, how did we get to 50,000? because that's the number that we use the other way around. When, um, when we pay people uh, claims, we have given the administrator authority of up to $50,000. And that, when we did that, we based that basically on $50,000 is often sort of a, a standard in the statutes for, for various types of claims, whether they require certain types of things to be done. Um, in, for example, in the uh, public works area, uh, whether it requires going to um, public bidding and certain things. The, the, that, it was just a number, it's a round number that gets used for other things. So it Thank you. And it's true, Chuck, isn't it, that in general, you know, municipal liability is $50,000 per claim per person, generally. I mean, it, it certainly moves around, but I think that's, where we came to the 50,000. Right. All right. So do we I have noticed, a motion? I noticed in the document, uh, Chuck, that ultimately we're gonna get a report on the settlements. It's just that you can go ahead and do them and then report back to us. Is that correct? Right. It's very similar to what happens with the, with the claims now. You know, we'll come, we come and tell you after the fact that, you know, we, we paid such and such a person uh, you know, ten thousand dollars because you know our snowplow crashed into their bumper or whatever. It's the same kind of thing. 
Okay, thank you. So I need a motion to authorize or to um, to approve the resolution. Move to approve the re resolution. Second, Trey. All right, is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Chair votes aye. Okay, let's move on to 3.7, which is a resolution adopting certain changes to the medical benefit plan and dental benefit plan effective in calendar year 2021 and so forth. And who do we have on this? Vicki, are you in the room or Todd, are you doing this? Vicki's going to step up to the middle podium and give okay. a presentation. Perfect. Vicki? All right. <laughs> Do you need help, Dad? Working it. Oh, okay. There we are. Okay. So the so what is being presented is the the plan for 2021. Um, to give a little bit of history, we've worked on. Uh, doing our due diligence as the Human Resources Department as well as the Wellness Committee to look at various options for this year. Uh, we had in place uh, earlier that we would look at two plans and uh, in speaking with the Finance Director and with Todd that we believed that that second plan which was going to be a more traditional plan would put us more at risk so we elected to have one plan, which is the plan that's uh, being presented tonight, uh, in addition that we would make a contribution to the HSA accounts for employees who would be uh, able to use that, as well as um, keeping the opt-out option for those who do not take our insurance and then keeping the, the spousal surcharge in place. So Vicki, what would you summarize uh, the big changes to be? Obviously it's the HSA contribution. Yes, that's, that is the most significant change for uh, 2021. Uh, one of the other pieces that we had prepared employees to do was that we would go to a 9% increase. And again, in discussion with Todd uh, and Marty and others that we would be looking at splitting the difference, we were at 8.13%, and we decided to go with an 8.5% uh, employee contribution for the, the premium contribution. Okay. Um, Todd, do you want to speak to the history of the um, HSA contribution and how this is changing, or and I, whoever? Or we also have Jenny who can also speak to it as well, if you would like. Yeah, we'll let Jim, Jenny, oh. we'll let Jenny Talk a little bit Do you about want to history. Be at that, Mike, you can be there. The floor is yours. The floor is mine. <laughs> uh, when we first went to the high deductible plan in 2015, for years 2015, 16, and 17, we gave uh, an HS HSA contribution of $750 for single and $1,500 for any of the other tier coverages. In 2018, we dropped that down to $600 and $1,200. And then in 2019, we dropped it down to 400, 800. And the reason why we dropped it down um, each year was because of the projected year-end balance for the health insurance fund. We were projected to be, at the end of 2019, we were projected to be at the 3 million mark, which is identified by ordinance that we have to maintain that balance in the fund. And based on figures we received recently from CLA, we are just above $4 million in the ending balance for the health fund. So that is why, after discussions, we decided that um, to show some good faith to the employees, to give back some of that to, to their HSAs, because that is employee uh, contributions. They're being smart with their health care. They are being good consumers with their health care. Um, and we had a pretty exceptional year in 2019. And to date, I believe we are running right around 60, 67.5% loss ratio, which is very good. Obviously, it's been impacted because of COVID, but that is historically. That's really good for us. Yes, <laughs> very good. 
questions for Vicki or Bert? When you say 67% loss rate, 67% of what loss? If we would be at 100% loss ratio, that means that we are exactly where we projected to be as far as expenses and revenues for the health fund. So we are at 67%, which means we are well below what was projected for 2020. Thank you. I had, I had a question, Mary Lynn. Uh, I got a clarification late today, so I'm pretty sure I understand it. But Jenny, would you go over the the deductible on the high deductible? Is that it's uh, three thousand dollars for a family? The way I understand it, and the employee is is responsible for the for the first three thousand. That is correct, and for a single coverage, the okay, a, single coverage, yeah, the deductible I is fifteen. That. I thought they were. I thought the uh, I thought the employee was responsible for the first fifteen hundred in the city, the second. But I now I, I understand that the employee is responsible for the full three thousand of the deductible, and the HSA will give them some help in dealing with that uh, that deductible next year. Is that correct? That is correct. Or it could if they choose it to use it that way. Correct. Okay. Well, now that I've got the clarification, I, I'm going to support. I'm going to support the document. The only thing that does make me a little queasy, though, is the we're going in. We're, we may be going into to, to 2021 with over four million dollars. Uh, does everybody think we're going to be comfortable if we uh, take the the amount, uh, whatever the amount is, out of the four million dollars to fund the HSA? Do we still feel comfortable? with going into 2021 that that four million is uh less than four million is going to be enough in case we have a big spike in uh claims because of maybe people not uh going to the doctor as much this year but the if things change with covid that we may have a a much larger exposure next year the the way i have it calculated out with our current uh census health insurance census the total amount that would be coming out of the fund for the HSA contributions would be right around $386,000. So that still leaves us about $615,000 remaining in the health fund. And then we also are increasing our total premiums by 5.2%. So there is gonna be an additional okay. amount of revenue going into the account. What happens? What happens if we uh, dip below the three million dollar minimum? Do we have to make that up in the following year then, with the with additional premium, or how do we make that whole again? Good that, question. That is a question that I I don't know the answer to, but I will find out for you. Todd, do you have any memory of when this has happened in the past? I don't. I don't remember us I actually. I think has gone up and down. Yeah. I don't recall us going below the three million, but um, I support the, the HSA contribution to the employees because as we continue to go up or go down, the employees also have to, um, they're affected by it. So the benefit here is obviously that they're seeing an increase of 5.2, as Jenny had said. Um, we are in a, in a unique situation with COVID and people are being, um, you know, better, uh, better uh, consumers. And I think COVID has also affected that so that, you know, non-essential items were not necessarily uh, able to be taken care of. But by giving, uh, by giving some back and it's just a one-off, it, it is not something that will um, be repeated um, in the future. It's just helping them through this COVID situation and during our, our tight budget times. As an aside uh, to- Marty, we, would, uh, would Marty have an answer to that question about if we did dip below the 3 million, would that have to be made up in additional premium or could we use undesignated fund balance to uh, make that whole? Yeah, Alder Bar and I, this is something that Vicki and I did talk about earlier. I, it was something that we were gonna follow up with Chuck on in regards to how the ordinance was probably written. Um, I think we have options, whether it can be made up with employee premiums or fund balance or a combination thereof. 
but as, as part of that conversation that I also asked uh, or was talking to Vicki about was if we as a or if the committee should consider an inflationary factor on that three million dollars on a annual or every other year basis to be able to stay current with rising medical costs. I mean, the intention of the three million is so that we have funding to pay for medical care, but I'm sure we all agree medical care costs more today than it did one year ago, two years ago, and, and so forth. So that was something that we also will be discussing. And Alder Boren, I, I think there's a couple of I think there's a couple of good sources for finding out what the uh, what the medical inflation is uh, year to year. I'm trying I'm trying to think of the one that's really well thought of. Uh, comes out once a year, but I'm sure there's several where we could we could come up with that inflation factor. Oh, uh, Jim, I have no doubt that that Vicky will be on that. I uh, I don't think we need to worry about that. So. Um, so I will just say I really like this proposal. Um, the changes seem reasonable. I'm happy to see the HSA back. Um, if there is a clear intent only to do it for one year, I think we need to be very explicit about it. Um, if we continue to have a good claims record uh, and we continue to maintain a substantial surplus in the fund, I don't see why we wouldn't continue it. But you know, whatever, whatever. The, the thought is we just need to make crystal clear to employees what the, what the deal is. So that's my only comment. Is there any other discussion, questions? I would just like to support what Mary Lynn said because typically you don't give something and then take it away. But I'm understanding that the history of this HSA is that it's floating. Some years we have it, some years we don't. Some years it's this rate, some years it's that rate. So um, I just think that needs to be communicated also. Mary Lynn? Yes. This is Todd. I, I want to make sure that the, the committee understands that Vicki and myself and the, and the committee have been very clear on this is a one-time one situation and it'll be a year by year, but nothing has been guaranteed. Okay. So we need a um, motion to approve the proposed changes to the um, health insurance plan. So moved. Second. All right. And I didn't word that very well, but it would be to changes to the city's medical benefit plan and dental benefit plan as outlined in the resolution. So if that's all right with everyone. It is. Sorry, I could have been clear. Um, is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Jenny, thanks for your presentation. It was very clear. I appreciate it. Welcome. Um, moving on to 3.8, which is a resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a loan agreement with the Housing Authority. <laughs> this has got some history. Who would like to take it? This is Chad. I'll take it. So you, so you guys had, uh, the council had reviewed this in closed session a number of months ago. As you'll recall, this is related to the reconstruction of the Wasserman apartments and the conversion of those 105 public housing units into uh, workforce housing under a tax credit project that they're doing as we speak. They had a deficit in their performa based on some issues with the exterior of the building. Uh, to the tune of 1472000 The council agreed to um, direct loan that money to Wasserman Development with the payment coming from uh, some funding that they would receive, the Housing Authority would receive from HUD um, and pay it off over a five-year period. So the documents before you today are the loan agreements that the city has negotiated with the developer uh, for that project, um, they will be paying a 4.25% interest rate and make annual disbursements back to the city based on the funding that they will receive from HUD. All right, questions for Chad? All right, then we will need a motion to recommend approval of the resolution. So moved. 
second. Perfect. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Good. Glad to get that done. Um, 3.9 is an ordinance annexing territory from the town of Wilson to the city of Sheboygan. Madam Chair, I can, nine, nine acres. I can take that one as well. So this is a parcel of land okay. around an acre of land that's being annexed in around the Sheboygan Christian High School. Sheboygan Christian High School is in the process of um, moving through the plan approval process to obtain approval to expand the school to include the elementary and middle school on their campus. And in doing so, the building crosses the property line and the property line happens to be town of Wilson. So they're required to annex a piece of property so that construction plans can continue. Um, the reason, so this document will be before the planning commission tomorrow, but the reason that it's here is state statute requires us to um, pay the town of Wilson the difference in taxes as it relates to um, the town's portion of the taxes. So what we've done in the past is the city has paid those fees and then asked the uh, applicant to reimburse the city for those fees. So that's what we're asking for here is that the motion would be to approve this ordinance with the understanding that the um, applicant would have to pay the difference in the town and uh, town taxes over a course of five years. Why would they owe, I mean, they're a nonprofit, I presume. Why would they owe any property tax? Because the property. The, Go ahead, Chuck. So the issue is that the way the statute is written is that the amount that the city has to reimburse the town is based on the most recent taxes and it is not currently tax exempt because they just bought the property. Oh, okay. And the statute does not take into account the fact that it's going to become tax exempt and so there's going to be all this money. So that, that's why we're making sure that they reimburse us for that amount. One other, one other piece that when you make the motion, um, in addition to that, that condition that, that the annexation occur, uh, there should also, it should also be um, the, that approval is contingent upon approval by the Department of Administration. That has not come through yet. And for that reason, this, I'm going to say that it's fairly unlikely that that will come in in enough time for this matter to go to council on Monday. Um, and we would just hold it if, if that's the case. Maybe they're, they're putting the, the folks from SES are pushing the DOA to get it done, but um, that doesn't always work. All right. Um, so the motion that I would see then is that we would, hang on half a sec here, is that we would, um, I'm sorry, I lost my place. That we would um, uh, recommend approving uh, the annexation as set out, or the ordinance annexing the territory with the understanding that any tax liability the city will owe to the town of Wilson will be reimbursed to the city by the property owner and that approval of the ordinance is contingent on approval from the Department of Administration. Is that a Don't fair? Move. Okay. So move hard. Fair rendering? Okay. All right. Any other discussion? Chuck, I just had a question. Uh, just to clarify, uh, the property that they're buying is on the tax rolls. So that's why the, for the tax reimbursement, but now that it's purchased, that property will now be exempt because it's a school. Most likely. I mean, they actually have to file the exemption request, but they probably will. All right. And David Bieber begins to build his town of Wilson empire. So one acre at a time. <laughs> Uh, all right, is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Very good. I'm glad they finally got their uh, school off the ground. 
Now our next meeting is uh, August 17th at 5.15. This is to um, get information from Carol about the, the uh, bond sale. And hopefully we'll be quite quick and then we'll just go right into the council meeting. Is everyone able to attend that meeting? Mm -hmm. Any I, will be, I will be there. Should be no problem for oh. me. Okay, sounds good. All right, so then we need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Thank you all. We got a lot done in a pretty quick period of time. Aye.